Where are the relays for the cooling fans on a Fiat Ducato? Asked, but loads of people didn't know, or didn't come back to me anyway. So I had to go dig in and find out where they were myself. So if you look under the bonnet, I'll show you where they are. This is a 1.9 turbo diesel, 1999. I'm looking in from the front of the engine and there's a box down here fitted above one of the fans. There's two fans, one's a bit higher, that one on the right there, which is the near side. And this one is the lower fan, which is in fact more powerful. This is the one that's supposed to come, in, come on at a higher temperature. So that's that. And there's a box up here, which I've got my finger on. And you've got the cables going into it, which is a good indication that something happening, although I wasn't sure. And the case can be taken off. There's three small screws. And lo and behold, what have you got in here? Two relays. They're both exactly the same. They are 12 volt coils and they are 30 amp rated because these fans, when they kick in, they take a lot of current. So you've got to have something that is capable of switching that kind of load. The wiring seems to come off of the starter motor down there, which is the only way to take that kind of load for these. And you've got a sensor. Uh, which I've got one here, I'm sure, and there's another one down at the bottom of the radiator as well. This particular fan, the big one on this side, the off side if you like, um, the one by the dipstick there, only comes on when it gets very hot. But as I'm anticipating going up to Scotland, I think I'd like to kick that in when I hit a big hill. If I hear the other fan come in and it's a long old drag, I really want to bypass that relay and have that fan come on as well. So what my intention is, is to take the relay side, the earth side, and bring it up and put it into the dash. That will solve the problem. Right, it's quite simple, these relays. You've got two pins which are for the relay coil, and you've got two pins which are for the fan, they pass the heavy current. So you've got the relay coil which works in connection with the temperature switch which earths out to the bodywork, energises the relay, closes the contacts, that then allows the fan to fire up, nice and simple. But which one's which? So let's have a look and see what's, uh, see what's going on. We've got five pins there, one's just really a locating pin so you can't get them the wrong way round and all you've got to do is check with a multimeter and see what's going on so I'll show you that now right I've set my multimeter to ohms and I've got one of the old fashioned ones with the analog I prefer these personally um, because I can uh, I can work with it better I'm sorry and also I've rigged up my relay there with a lead and it doesn't matter which way round these, these go because all you're measuring is continuity. So as soon as I touch a, a, a my lead to the other probe, then I get full needle deflection. So that shows me I've got a contact. Whether it goes through anything, it doesn't make no difference. So now if I play about with the contacts here, so we'll try on that one, nothing. We'll try on that one, nothing. We'll try on that one, nothing. We'll try on that one. So we've got no connection on that one there. So that suggests to me that it's the load. So then we'll go on to the next one here. And we know damn well that we didn't have a connection on that one. So that's it. But nevertheless you do it. Oh, 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 oh. We've got a connection. There we go. So we've got full deflection on that. And on this one here we got nothing at all. So we now know that the connection for the coil which energises... The relay itself is on these two pins here. So if you have a look at them, okay, and we know that the the actual relay itself, the wire in and the wire out, goes to these two here. Now one of those is going to be earth. So anyway, we know now that this relay is fine and it's working. So now, um, what about the fan? 
the fan could be in trouble so it's a good way of testing things because the only other thing after we do this test we know that the relay is fine and as long as the coil is energized that will turn on the fan but of course if the fans 40 that won't happen so now we can actually check the fan now we can do that without a multimeter would you believe and I'll show you how to do it Don't laugh too much. This is an amazing piece of kit. It's you. It's useful because you can check if there's 12 volt there on uh, on a particular uh, like a socket or something like that. And also you can check with a 21 watt bulb in line. You can check and if it's something like the fan, that will act as a load. So if you've got a short or anything like that, that will uh, will light up, but it won't blow the circuit. It won't blow the fuses and I'll show you how to do it. All it is, is a standard, now I've got a, a stop tower light bulb, which is 21 watt. Um, I've just got the indicator bulb, that's all I've got. Solder the two wires onto there, and in this instance I've got just two probes. Uh, that's all I want. Um, they're not ideal, because I'd like them to have been like the probes on a multimeter, so you could get them in places, but that'll do. And I'll show you how to get by and test the motor. I'll actually show you it. Right, we've got the relay base down there, so we know that the um, the vertical ones in this picture, in other words, a bit hard to do with this, these two here, that's that one there, and the lower one there, they are the relay coil because they were the horizontal ones. And where you've got the other two in the uh, in the coil, i.e. that one there and that one there, diagonally opposite each other there, running across the vehicle, those ones are, we suspect, the load. So that's what we want to check. And that is the load that is switched when the switch goes in the hot water system. So I'll show you how to test that using the bulb setup. Right, here's my lash up. I've got my bulb, as you can see there. And I've got a tool that I've just got stuffed into that... Um, into that position there that I said you took the load. I don't know if you can see it there. It's just behind the yellow wire there. And that is by the side of the relay. Now the other one, the other crocodile clip to the bulb, I've got connected onto this little probe here, which I'm going to, in a moment, put into the connection diagonally opposite. And all I'll do is I'll pop this in there. That's gonna be a bit hard holding the camera, but here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Right, here we go. Make sure it's in there. Right, I've got the connection now, and I've got to hold it obviously. But you'll notice that the fan is spinning. I'm only going slow, and the reason that it's only going slow is because of the load of the bulb. The load is of the bulb is taking the power from the fan. Now it's no good using a smaller bulb, you've got to have something like 21 watts to do this and that's just enough to kick the fan and tickle it. So I'll take the connection off now and there we go, the fan stops. So nice and simple and easy to do. So now I know that the relay base is working. So we've checked the coil, we know that that's alright um, on the relay so the only other thing that it could be if you've got a faulty fan we've checked the fan now we've checked the relay the only other thing it could be is the switch but it does help you saving uh, to save money and to find out exactly what it is with nothing special except the lead and a bulb right now I've got the horrible job I've got to get wire from here on the dash for the fan all the way through the bulkhead and that is a pain in the butt it really is so I will carry on and this takes the longest time right uh, under the dash I've pulled the wire through and I've managed to get it through on this the old system there before I put the electronic one in I've put the electronic one in there which works the servos on the headlamps um, if you want to do that then it's up to you but it will save you 150 quid these things are 160 quid on eBay and they fail so I've kept it there but the pipes that go from there to the back of the headlamps I'm using that as a way to get this wiring 
very very difficult um, incidentally this way gives you an infinitely variable uh, system and the servos are about eight quid each it's dead simple to do and again it's on one of my other videos but this is the way I've used to get it through and I proposed to use just a simple switch which I will label up just with a, a just on and off I certainly don't need a don't need a, a light on to tell me that it's on because of the noise and uh, I can show you that quite simply if you listen I think it should pick it up. Ready? Here we go. And that's a lot of draft. So, if I'm going up a hill in Scotland or whatever, all I'll do is I flick a switch and I see the temperature going up, and uh, that will certainly keep it cool on the on a long long hill. If that don't keep it cool, nothing will. And I can put that on before the switch cuts in because I've never had it cut in so far. Um, so that should help a lot. The box has been put back and what I've done is that wire that you see that goes that I've just earthed out all that is is an earth wire so it doesn't carry any current so I don't need any fuse and it goes to the earth side of the relay coil so it takes no load whatsoever and it comes up and this is the wire here the black wire there which I've got in a sleeve and it comes up and it goes up. I've put it around the back there and that's the path that I've taken with it. Incidentally, down here where the cable goes into the box, I've used my usual, which is gutter sealant. It doesn't go that hard and it always stays pliable and it's absolutely brilliant. So that's what I've used as it goes underneath there and in the back of the box. Right, there's the blank that I used. Just cut a small hole in it and put a switch in there. It's only a single pole and that will clip back into that position there making it nice and neat and nothing interferes with the circuitry as it is at the moment nothing at all because this is only earth that's all it is it's a, it's there's no this is taking no current at all all the current goes through the fan so there's no uh, there's no problem here that all only takes it goes through the fan relay it doesn't go through the contacts on the fan at all and all I need to do now is push this back and I've got to now sort all this lot out it's always the sorting out and, uh, uh, and putting it all back that really takes all the time but it's amazing what you can do with just a bit of wire a bulb and also a switch so you can identify A if the relay is faulty if the fan is still working with a multimeter you can check that you've got voltage and also you can check the coil to make sure that that is working so you can check if it's a relay fault if it's a fan fault or if it's a sender fault all from that simple checking anyway that's enough now I'm going to pack up and and uh, finish off there we go sorry about the shadows but there you go you can see it on there fan Oh, listen to that, beautiful. Nice and simple. So I can turn it on whenever I need to, when the temperature goes up too much.